Okay, so this is my presentation on generalized anxiety disorder, which I'll refer to GAD in sports. I decided to do this disorder because I was always interested in how people with these type of disorders would perform in sports at the highest level. And so, um, and also because I, I like sports and I participated in it throughout my whole life. Um, so before we actually go into the, the disorder, we're going to examine GAD real quick. Um, so according to Taylor and Bolin, what it is is a persistent common disorder where patients have been unfocused worry and, and anxiety and which is not linked to any particular um, recent stressful events um, saying this this worry and this um, and anxiety can be still be set off by certain situations and we'll see some of these situations when we go into actually the case study um, of Royce White later on in the presentation um, and so um, onset and, and, and risk uh, usually before the it's usually before the age of 25 years where men have a double the probability of, of women of suffering from GAD. These factors include family history of the condition, uh, increasing stress and a history of physical or emotional trauma. Friccioni also points out that there's a, a link, interestingly, between smoke and anxiety, finding that adolescents who smoke more heavily are uh, five to six times more likely to be at risk of GAD uh, in, in comparison to their peers who don't uh, actually smoke. And I thought that was quite interesting. Um, somebody should do a study on uh, anxiety and, and uh, the church with regards to the word of wisdom that we have okay so how is it treated there are mainly two aspects uh, uh the psychological therapy and drug treatment um according to um taylor and baldwin again um psychological therapy is the one that doctors would uh, most likely psychologists would most likely like to prescribe to their patients but because of the limited resources they usually just um prescribed drugs and these drugs include bear we uh, with my uh, pronunciation but benzodiazepines um bisphoron and antidepressants are the most commonly used drugs and, and prescribed by um by um these doctors my my ideal situation which i thought when i was going through this was to just mix up the psychological therapy with the drug treatment but in uh, according to the taylor and Bolin article people usually steer clear of both um, and what they do is they just pick one that they're more comfortable with and steer clear of the other. So if somebody chooses therapy, they'll kind of steer clear of uh, drug treatment. So more importantly, why does this why does this matter? Uh, money is a huge part of it. According to Barlow, people spend millions of dollars annually on, on to rid themselves of um, GAD and other types of anxiety. This includes visits. This includes visits to physicians, uh, um, utilization of healthcare s uh, services, along with the high payment and because of the high demand of anxiety um, drugs. So there's a large thing in the wallet, but more importantly, I think it's it's important why it matters most because of the people that it it, it affects. Um, these people want to want to live normal lives uh, with normal anxiety and strive to do whatever it takes to to achieve this. Um, so I think it matters most because of the people involved. So we're going to go with the sports aspect now. Why sports? Uh, before we actually go into the disorder, we're going to talk about anxiety in sports uh, as a lead up into this. So pressure. Stress and pressure in sports has always been something that um, that has been part of the games, um, different sports. So you can see Chris Webber and Magic Johnson. Chris Webber in the yellow jersey who who um, <coughs> made a disastrous call in, in the NCAA um, match madness final, um, which led to his team losing. Also, you see pictures of uh, Ben Johnson and Lance Armstrong trying to stay atop their sport and the pressures of that, how uh, they took drugs. And then the pressures even from outside the sport. And uh, this is from, uh, that's why I put up Tiger Woods and Manta Teo right there. So anxiety in sports, um, state anxiety, Ruridan found that many athletes have just normal state anxiety, meaning that they become anxious before competition. And this is, I think this is normal because I've had butterflies before, um, before games and the feeling of the stomach and nuts. Um, saying that Patel and Norman said that young athletes between 30 and 13 and 24 see sports participation is no more stressful than other activities of daily student or work life. However, extreme anxiety can be detrimental to performance, they admit. And this in Ragland uh, states that um, anxiety is believed to influence sports performance, and elevated anxiety is a cause of poor performance in athletes. Despite, even though there's this uh, use of widespread um, anxiety reduction techniques, there's no m much evidence that these things really work. Um, so causes and uh, characteristics, some of the causes of this anxiety in sports are genetic factors, um, innate temperamental, parental conditioning, uh, even um, conditioning events and cognitive influence. Characteristics of these things like persisting, distressful apprehension, um, and even actual impairment of skill to a degree unwarranted by this individual's uh, aptitude, training, and performance. Um, so we're moving on to the next slide. So some of the research that actually been done in sports are written and in fact in 2010. 
um, found that uh, two, two, two uh, particular scenarios, social anxiety disorder and compulsive disorder. So in social anxiety disorder, they found that um, this is actually related to anxiety symptoms in sports because sports is, uh, bring performance demands and social evaluation. They also found that in um, social anxiety is more avoided when, when um, students, uh, participants take part in team sports instead of individually. And I can see how that is with individuals uh, taking uh, individual in the spotlight of a team. You can actually hide people in there. Um, the one of the own, uh, yeah, or yeah, compulsive disorders, um, muscle dysmorphia was one that they found. Uh, we're in body image in which patients who are actually muscular think they're too small and um so there's they've uh written in fact they've, they've stated that there's not much um large or systematic studies on done on this topic but they report that that bodybuilders seem to be at, at high risk uh, here in compare in comparison to other athletes uh, with bodybuilders with women bodybuilders funny enough having a higher incidence than their male counterparts um Rudin finishes by stating that not much has been done in research uh, and study on the use of GA of on GAD in sports one of the only articles that I found on GAD in sports was uh, a scale who was a Frenchman and so he did a study in France on high-level athletes and they usually actually um, used uh, from 13% of the French athlete population and they found that GAD was the highest was the most prevalent disorder found in men and women about 6% of this 13% um, what they also found was that a large number of the men from this sample, 82.80, almost 83 percent, um, diagnosed with GAD, did not suffer from any other anxious uh, anxiety disorder or anxious disorder. While women with GAD um, also struggle with agoraphobia, panic disorder, and um, OCD. And so, that was quite interesting. Uh, not so since not much was actually found on um, GAD, I decided to um, do a case study. And this case study was with Royce, Royce White, who from the United States, grew up in Minnesota, um, is a basketball player, went to Iowa State and then was drafted by the um, Houston Rockets. And we're going to see a, a video actually um, that, that takes into account his uh, anxiety and his on the draft day. So he's a musician. He started having his panic attacks when he was 16 years old, agonizing panic attacks. And that's when he was diagnosed um, by doctors with um, GAD. So early on, is before he actually started taking medication for it, his coping mechanism was whenever he get an attack or or overwhelming worry and anxiety. His mom would take him for drives in the Minnesota River, uh, along the Mississippi River, sorry, where he would um, start to, the heartbeat would slow down and his breathing would become a little bit more easier. He, he, he still, he had and still contains a deep fear of flying. Um, and this actually builds up more when he's going on his way to the airport as he starts fixating on the possibility of uh, Crash and so in airplanes he's in airplanes he's steady he's always fidgeting, he's always asking the air the air hostess and stewards is everything okay with the with the with the flight the plane and stuff like that. Um, he also has a OCD, um, which uh, which I thought was interesting because usually I, I usually people with GAD, um, I found um, don't have this OCD. So but he has OCD where he sa where he states in an article that he alphabeti alphabetizes his DVD rack. Um, systematically arranges his pillow, his throw pillows, and sets always sets his wallet and phone at right angles. Um, in regards to in relation in regards to his OCD, Royce White has stated, and I quote: um, "It's the thing that God has built in me, so I always finish things." Which I thought was quite interesting. He's taken this positive outlook on life. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a quick video snapshot of of, uh, of uh, Royce's uh, life, and this is him and his panic and how he dealt with his panic disorder as he was about to be drafted by. Uh, in the NBA.
for that short clip you can see that uh, of the of the uh, disorder that um Royce is facing so we're going to do a quick uh, comparison um to the DS, uh, DSM um 5 to to the video that you just saw and so so he first talked about his panic attacks and started the video started off that way and so in DSM in the Andrews article stated that basically excessive anxiety and worry can lead to this so uh, Rowine article talks uh, states that um, ex excessive anxiety and worry can almost lead to the patient having an increased heart rate profusely sweating and offset a of panic attack uh, this can happen in succession and that's why Royce White stated that it's almost feel like he's, he was dying um, he also has states a fear of flying and Spitzer and others in their um, report said that um, in their self-report research questionnaire flying is one of the many situations that set off these panic attacks and others include uh, enclosed spaces and large crowds he also talked about in genetic there that I picked up that um, his mom dealt with it her mom dealt with it and he's trying to deal with it and so genetics in Campbell and Brown states that up that that a person's personality even though it have effect on GAD but specific events also state that genetic factors are a lot genetic factors uh, genetic factors play a large part in the manifestation of our uh, GAD uh, a quote from the article said they found that genetic factors were important for both major depression and general lies anxiety disorder as you can see from the from the movie it's a little bit fidgety there always moving and so uh, rest in the DSM it says restlessness or feeling keyed up and on edge um, in article Dugas and other states uh, found that in subjects being examined that those with GAD when, um, would have a, a tendency to always be moving and not um, staying still in a particular position so these are some of the things that I did in, in cooperation and so the future uh, picture there is Delonte Weston and um, Royce White and so these are the only two athletes that have actually come out and stated that they um, have anxiety disorder professional teams um, and the McDuff McDutt interview um, I mean um, research stated that um, ML the Major League Baseball NFL and even the NBA have now have requested that all their teams have counseling available for for people that have um, for people that have these disorders and for psychological help and more so Rose White and has bring awareness to the NBA and seeking recognition and respect and understanding